Here's what I'm hoping to accomplish in this video. I get you a basic idea of the slope. If I give you the graph of the line, can you find it? What if there's no graph and I just give you two points? What if I give you a, a whole bunch of points in an XY table and all these points are on a line? Can you find the slope? And again, no graph. Um, certainly, I want you to know the abbreviation of the slope. Um, but more importantly, I, I think besides just being able to look at a, a graph line and find it, I want you to be able to take some of this uh, mystery away about what makes the slope formula work. Um, it looks rather hideous when you first see it. So that's the goal of this video. What is slope? It's just a ratio of how a line changes. Um, take any two points on a line and just look at how it, how it moves from one point to the next point. Um, the slope is this ratio, and again, it's, it's just comparing one number to another. The top number of the slope will be measuring how the line moves up or down. Um, let's look at this left uh, point here that I've got right here that's at 12 on the y-axis. And we want to try to get down to this point uh, on the line. And let's just see this movement of how it works. The rise is your top number. Now, why is it a negative 2? You notice that the point I'm focusing on is at 12 on the y-axis, but I have to move down two levels on the y-axis, and that puts me at 10. So I decreased the y-axis position. I have dropped by two levels on the y-axis. You show a decrease on any axis by using a negative number. So I dropped by two spots. That will be negative 2. Now my bottom number is the run. And let's use another highlighter for that. Let's put that in blue. So I dropped down 2, and that was negative 2. And now, if you notice, down here I'm at 0 on the x-axis. And I'm going to move over 3 spots on the x-axis. I went from 0 to 3. In this situation, I actually increased uh, the axis number. And so from 0 to 3, I'm representing with a positive 3. Now... Uh, a lot of times people are like, well, well do I have to go left to right, or, or do I have to, to find the rise first? No, just take a look at it. Let's, let's look at this. What if I went from this right point on a line, and again, it doesn't have to be anything special. It's just two points that you can easily find. Uh, in this case, uh, to get from this right point to the left one, I would have to go up two spots. And so that would put me from 10 to 12 on the y-axis. So I'm showing that movement with a positive 2. Now, my x uh, axis is going to be shown with the run. If you notice, I'm right now at positive 3 on the x-axis, and I've got to go all the way down to 0. This time, I'm going smaller on my x-axis, and I've got to drop my values by 3 on my x-axis. So I'm going to show that movement with the negative 3. Okay, so my slope is 2 over negative 3. Um, is that the same? Well, you tell me. Isn't this pretty much negative two-thirds? The same way that this is negative two-thirds? It, it's, it's a negative fraction. It's a negative ratio. So it is the same. And that's the reason you didn't see that line switch. Look, while I'm flipping between these two examples, my line stays exactly the same, even though that negative moved from the top number to the bottom number. It's the same slope. So my slope is negative two-thirds. Now, um, I like slopes because they also show you a pattern. Let's look at a totally different line, um, and, and let's just follow it through. Do you see that if I went from this left point on this line to this right point, I would have to move up 3 on my y-axis. So I went from 0 to 3. That was an increase, so it's a positive 3. And on my x-axis, it's also an increase this time. I went from 0 to 1. That's my run movement, so I put that on the bottom. Hey, 3 over 1, both positive. That means I've got a positive slope. I could also just say my, my slope is 3, because 3 is the same as 3 over 1. Um, it repeats again and again, and that's what I'm talking about with the pattern. So now I'm at this point, and I'm still going to go up 3 from my rise. I went from 3 to 6 on the y-axis. So since I increased, it's a positive 3. And this time I'm going to go from 1 to 2 on the x-axis, and hey, I'm back on the line. And again, my slope is still 3 over 1. Watch this pattern play out. 
up 3 from 6 to 9 on the y-axis, so positive 3. And I go from 2 to 3 on the x-axis, and I'm back on the line here again. And even though the line kind of stops right here, can't we just go up 3 and to the right 1 to get a new point on the line? I mean, that's where the line's headed, so yeah. And we can extend our line. I love being able to see patterns with a slope. I, I think most people take to this pretty easily. Um, the big thing is, is there another way to find the slope? Because a lot of times you don't have these graph lines. Yes, and, and that's what we're going to be settling in for. Um, but to do that, we, we need to start looking at a different way of looking uh, at the slope. Um, here's our rise. We went up 3. Here's our run. We went over 2. Our rise always goes on top, and our run goes on the bottom. But have you noticed that our rise is always measured on the y-axis? I mean, think about that. Every single time we've gone up or down, it's, it's been on the y-axis. So could we just say our, our y-values in this ratio of change has to go on the top? And our x-values, well, that's always been on our x-axis. So could we just say our run is associated with the x-axis? That's our change in x. Um, so instead of looking at it as rise over run, which, hey, I, I like that, and if it helps you keep it straight, use it. But we could also call our top number the change in y values, and we could call it uh, the change in x values on the bottom. Um, I hate writing the word change in, so let's teach you a little bit of math. This is a Greek letter called the delta. It's a triangle. And uh, if you use that math, it means the change in. So when you see this triangle, it just means the change in y over the change in x. And we're going to refer to our slope as the change in y over the change in x now. Okay? So, yeah, this is our rise. This is our change in y's. This was our run, so this is now our change in x's. So our 3 goes on top, and our 2 goes on the bottom. Now, you'll see that our slope, uh, our change in y goes up 3, and our change in x goes over to the right 2, and it just continues on. Is there another way to find the slope? Because so far, all we've done is, is change our little idea instead of rise over run to be this change in y over the change in x. Yeah, what if we look at two specific points with their, their coordinates there? This point is 6, 9. This point is 4, 6. Um, how could we find our change in y's? Well, uh, subtract your y's. So how about this 9 minus this 6, and it would be our change in y's on top. So there we go. That's the 3. See how 9 minus 6 is 3? It's our change in y's, so that's our top number. How about our change in x's? 6 minus 4 is 2. And that's our change in x, so that goes on the bottom. Um, which number do I use first? Everybody asks this. Do you see where I flipped it around backwards? Now I'm saying 6 minus 9. 6 minus 9 is negative 3. And 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Our change in y's are written in blue, so this would be negative 3 on top and negative 2 is on the bottom. And guess what? Negative 3 over negative 2 is the exact same thing as positive 3 over positive 2. Now, this usually blows people's minds, so um, let's talk about this. If I use this one right here, uh, I could go down 3 on my y-axis because I'd go from 9 to 6, so that decreased me by 3. And then uh, on my x-axis, uh, I could be moving from 6 on the x-axis to 4 on the x-axis. And so it still kept us on the same line. Or let's use this positive 3 halves right here. Our rise is 3, so I could go up 3 and to the right 3. So it's the same number. Uh, technically, if you ever have a negative negative, just get rid of the negatives and write it as positive. Um, but we could also look at it with our division rules. What's a negative 3 divided by negative 2? Well, it's positive 1.5. What's 3 divided by 2? Positive 1.5. It's, it's the same number. Um, 
Now this is one thing that you cannot do. If I start out with the 6 here, and I say 6 minus 9, I can't suddenly go, okay, let's go 6 minus 4 from my x-axis. Um, because 6 minus 4 is a positive 2 and is negative 3 halves. So you, this 2 would go on the bottom and that's positive now. This negative number is not the same as the positive number. And so we, we've got to find a way to make sure that once we start this subtraction, we don't run into that difficulty. Well, let's take a look at the actual formula. Uh, slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And before you panic here and you start seeing all these 2s and x's and 1s and y's and, and that sort of thing, let's look at this. Our change in y, how do we do it? We subtracted our x's. How do we get our change in I'm sorry, how do we get our change in y's? We subtracted our y's. How do we get our change in x's? We subtract our x's. So when you see y2 minus y1, um, it's it's not too hard because here's our first point, 4, 6. The 6 is a y, so let's put that as y1, and our, our 4 was an x, so that's x1. And then when we go to point 2, well, this 9 becomes our y2, and this x becomes our x2. So let's go look at uh, two totally different points and see how this fits in. Um, see, we have two points. Okay, so let's go plug this into a formula, 6 minus 0. Well, our y2 is our 6, so that's a 6. What about our x2? The x2... It's right here with this 4. So 4 minus 0. If I start with the 6 uh, for our y's, I'm going to use the, its x partner to start for our x's. And that's all you have to do. 6 minus 0, 4 minus 0. And 6 minus 0 is 6. 4 minus 0 is 4. Simplify it. It's 3 halves. Um, finally, what if you had no graph. What if I just gave you two points? Here's your formula. Or you could think of it as the change of y over the change of x's. Well, uh, we've got them color-coded. Our x's are in red and our uh, y's are in blue. So let's just go plug this first point in. It's our very first one, so let's plug it in the first gap here. So uh, the y was 0 and the x was 0. What do we got left? This 2 and the 3. There we go. What's 0 minus 3? Negative 3. 0 minus 2? Negative 2. What did I tell you to do when both of the numbers are negative? Make it positive. And now let's go see if these two points are on the same line with this slope. There's 0, 0. Here's 2, 3. Is our slope positive 3 over 2? Uh, to move from this point, I would have to go up 3. So yeah, okay. And then I'd have to go over 2. Looks like we successfully found the slope uh, of the line that ran through these two given points. Um, at this point, you've uh, been able to figure out how to find the slope of a line when it's on a graph. And also how to find the slope of the line when you're given two points. Um, will watching this video make you uh, proficient at doing this? No. What you've got to do right now is basically you've got to be able to do these problems yourself. So um, let's go through with this. I want to tell you one other thing. If you ever see m equals the slope, uh, you know, like m equals a fraction, they're trying to tell you it's a slope. Anytime that you see m uh, in there, it's usually standing for the slope of a linear equation. So at this point, it's your time to go practice. You need to write down, uh, number one, these two points. Number two, if, if you've got an idea where I'm going with this, give it a shot and see if you can find the slope here. And here's number three. Here's the graph of a line. Just pause the video and see if you can get the slope right now. And when you're ready, hit play, and we'll see how you do. Okay, hopefully you had great success, but hey, it's shaky when you first start doing this. Let's look at number one. Here's our uh, uh, formula, the change of y over the change of x. So let's grab our y's and put them in there. Six minus negative 3. I, I like how I can just go left to right. 6 minus negative 3 goes on top for our y's. We'll do the same for our x's. 5 minus 7. Um, 6 minus negative 3 is 9. 
5 minus 7 is negative 2. You could go ahead and simplify that down to 9 divided by negative 2 is negative 4.5, but uh, either one is acceptable. Um, either one is perfectly fine. If you found either one, it's great. How about number 2? Um, what we do here is we look at four points on a line. We only need two of them. So I chose this point of 7, 9, and I've already got it started for our equation just to show you that, hey, this is the first y you look at. Put it right here. But then come back and grab its partner, its x value, and put that one right there to start it out, and that's what keeps you out of trouble. So now uh, you could choose uh, 0, 0, and that'd be 9 minus 0 and 7 minus 0. Um, I'm actually going to choose this point right here, and it would be um, five, uh, excuse me, 5 and 3 put in there. And so 4 over 4 is 1, and that's our, our slope. Um, what I'm realizing right now is that I ran into a problem. Um, 0, 0 is not on this line, and I apologize for that. Um, basically, basically, uh, it should have been 0, 2. So if, if you use this point, go back and, and check your calculations uh, with this point at 0, 2. Um, I'm sorry, um, but uh, basically I was in a hurry getting this together, and that's what it should be. You should get a slope of 1 every single time. Uh, and in fact, I'll do this one for you right now. Let's just do 9 minus 2. Well, that would be... 7, and what's 7 minus 0? Well, that would be 7, and that would be on the bottom, and 7 over 7 is 1. That's 14 minus 2. 14 minus 2 is 12. What's 12 minus 0? 12 minus 0 is 12, so 12 over 12 is 1. And how about this one? 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2 is 3, and what's 3 minus 0? 3 minus 0 is 3, so 3 over 3 would also equal 1. So no matter which two points you chose, the, the slope would be 1.